Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. We are glad that you are with us. Welcome to the daily Bible study for the Selang Church of Christ. We will start this morning, as always, with a uh, prayer request. Uh, Marvin, you got your ball pen handy? Very good. Uh, Miss Giselle? Yes, good morning to everyone. My prayer request is still the same, peace of mind, enlightenment for my husband, and thanks, give, thanks to all the blessings that we receive every day. Okay. Miss Anna, how's all of you today? Uh, he's doing good, sir, but still on medication. Okay. Well, uh, considering where he was a month ago, that's, that's a vast improvement, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, thanks. Uh, first of all, thanksgiving for all the blessings that we receive every day. Continuous healing for Zaldi, Irish, and Mildred. Okay. So, thank you. Miss Ronald Lynn, how's the family? Uh um, thanksgiving, sir, for all the blessings that we received, and especially the good health of my father and strength for all of my family, and praising God for um, some answered prayers, okay. and um, enlightenment for my brothers, um, Ramses and Drayden. Okay, and we had a death in the family, didn't we? Uh, yes, sir. Um, it's done, sir. Um, it's cremated and it goes to um, late. Okay. How's the uh, family doing with that? Is that that's um, kind of that's always kind of difficult. Yes, sir. Of course. Um, still, um, peace of mind for the, the family. Okay. Roxanne, good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Happy and birthday. Good, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> uh, my prayer request is um, Thanksgiving for all the blessing and praise God for guiding my uh, decision and for uh, guiding always for my way and Thanks for the guidance and safety and continuous healing for my mother, stepmother. Okay. How's she doing? Uh, she's doing well, sir. Uh, on 13, sir, she had a follow-up checkup. And that went, that went well? Yes, sir. Okay. Glad to hear that. Miss Wilma, how's your sister-in-law today? Uh, she's fine, sir, and uh, saying uh, her thank you for all the prayers of the church. Okay. We're glad she's having a good day. Anything else on your mind? Um, for the success of the anniversary on the 19th. Okay. That will be successful. Julie, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My prayer request is praise God for all the blessings, including my sister's job. And good health for my family and guidance. Okay, very good. Marvin, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Prayer request? Uh, prayer request from my teacher. Uh, her name is Abby for continuous healing, sir. Okay, how's she doing? Uh, still on medication, sir. Okay. By the way, we'll put you on that prayer request. We hope that you get you get to feeling better also, okay? Okay, sir. Cora, good morning. Good morning, everyone. And prayer request today? It's going to be the same for uh, Pedro and Glendy. Enlightenment for Kay and Kim. And prayer for Irene and her family. Irene and her family. That's right. Her sister died yesterday. Michael, are you with us? Still trying to get you. 
Okay. Let's let Gladys in the room real quick. It's possible lawmakers will also reference Dr. Anthony Fauci and question whether we are off, please. Michael, can you hear us okay? Okay, sir. Okay, very good. I Gladys, say again, please. Okay. You have kind of a weak signal. Uh, Gladys, are you in? Yes. Yes, sir. I mean. Okay. Do you have a prayer request at this time? Prayer request, sir. Yes. A good health, sir, for my auntie. Okay. That's all, sir. All right. Maybe, you, maybe you can put Michael uh, for a uh, health issue. Okay. Yeah. Michael, Marvin? they have, they have some prayer requests. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. May you feel better. You feel better. Let's add Michael on the prayer, prayer request. We will do that. Okay. Got that, Marvin? Okay. Good deal. Give us a prayer, please. Okay, let us bow our head in the presence of the Father. Dear Father, as we come together to study the things you want us to learn, we appreciate you joining us and being there with us. We are also appreciative of your constant blessing for us. Uh, Lord, we prayed for your guidance in comprehending your message, your fortitude in putting it to good use, and your ability to instill in us the love we require to enable others to experience the saving power of your word. Uh, Father, uh, this morning, uh, we pray for the successful anniversary, uh, anniversary of this church. Uh, we also uh, pray for the enlightenment of these fellow uh, of these people. Um, Sister Giselle's husband, Ramses, uh, Raiden, Kim, Kay, um, and also we all, uh, we praise you for uh, providing a job for at the for sister Julie's uh, sister, which is at the Jonah. Uh, we also pray for good health for uh, Gladys auntie and for uh, peace of mind for Ati Giselle. Uh, Father, we continue while remembering to pray for our loved ones, Sir Ernest. Brother Pedro, Sister Glendy, Sister Chris Lita, uh, Sister Mildred, Brother Zaldi, Sister Irish, uh, Sister Effie, uh, Doc Kiko, uh, Brother Joseph, uh, uh, Sister Abby, and Brother Michael, and me, uh, I myself as well. Uh, for them to be able to deal with the issue they are currently facing right now, uh, please kindly give them the courage, healing, and hope. With your son, our only Savior, we say this prayer. Amen. 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 All right, everybody, let's open our Bibles to the book of Ezra. Book of Ezra, please. And we're going to go to chapter 7, and we're going to pick up in verse 23. So, Giselle, when you get there, that's yours. Good morning, Fred. Good morning. Seven twenty-three in the book of Ezra, please, yourself. Um, Ezra chapter seven, verse twenty-three says that whatever is decreed. By the God of heaven, let it be done in full for the house of the God of heavens. Let his route be against the realm of the king and his son. And Anna, go ahead and give us 24 to go with this. 
And verse 24 says, We also not notify you that it shall not be lawful to impose tribute, custom, or toll on any one of the priests, the Levites, the singers, the doorkeepers, the temple servants, or other servants of this house of God. Okay, um, we're going to see a couple of different things here. In verse 23, if you'll pay attention to what it says here, it says, lest his wrath be against the realm of the king and his sons. I guess this might show us the motivation for the generosity that is being shown by the kings uh, of the per Medo Persian Empire towards the God of the nation, the uh, God of. Uh, the Israelite people, it shall not be lawful, verse 24, to impose tribute. Um, this is really a blanket tax exemption for everyone that is um, in the religious community. And according to a commentator by the name of Rawlison, this is absolutely permanent and probably continued until the end of the Medo-Persian Empire. Um, when we look at 25, which is coming up, let's go ahead and read that, and then we'll talk about it. Chapter 7, verse 25 in the book of Ezra. Ronald Lynn. And 25 says, And you, Ezra, according to the wisdom of your God that is in your hand, appoint magistrates and judges who may judge all the people in the province beyond the river, all such as know the laws of your God and those who do not know them, you shall teach. And 26, Roxanne. And 26, whoever will not obey the law of your God and the law of the king, let judgment be strictly executed on him whether for death or for banishment or for confiscation of his good or for imprisonment. Okay, so what we see here is we see an extension of growth, if you will, in the authority that has been extended to Ezra. Because up until this point, he only had authority up to the river. Now there is some quality of his mind and his character, that it was earnest for them to respect and honor their world leaders who observed them. Joseph honored Pharaoh. Daniel honored Nebuchadnezzar. And now Ezra is going to honor Artaxerxes. And all of these men were granted a status under their respective kings that was a little less than that of a deputy monarch, if you will. This really is the end of the letter of Artaxerxes. It gave Ezra power over the whole Persian province beyond the river. It is also a great significance in that it recognizes the Medo-Persian Empire under Artaxerxes recognized the law of Moses as the supreme law of the land, along with the rulings of the king. And it can be understood as being cooperative between the two. From We must recognize that Artaxerxes has an unusually brilliant mind in that he recognizes the utility or the usefulness, if you will, of the Mosaic law, which included, of course, the Ten Commandments or Decalogue as a charter government for the whole kingdom. It must seem strange to those that were under the Medo Persian Empire that 47 of, they were not aware of it. However, right now, 47 of the 48 continental United States and their various constitutions have specifically listed the Ten Commandments as the basic law of everyone. This seems to be a truth. Honoring God's law uh, brings us joy. People tend to 
unbelievers tend to look at God's law as a list of thou shalt not, things that we cannot do. But I want to take just a moment. I'm going to give you a few seconds. Think about the most painful thing that has happened in your life. Emotional, physical, whatever that pain was. Now I want you to think about how much pain would have not been in your life if everyone had simply lived by God's law. If we all lived by God's law, our lives would be much better. Uh, there's a commentator, once again, going back to that gentleman by the name of Rollison. Uh, he gives a summary of the commission that has been given to Ezra here in chapter 7 and verse 26. The temporary provisions, uh, this was permission for all Israelites who wanted to go with Ezra to Jerusalem. He gave them permission to carry monetary gifts of the king and his counselors to Jerusalem. Uh, like I said earlier, this looks a lot like the exodus from uh, Egypt. Uh, it gave permission to draw upon the royal sub-treasury, large grants up to the limits that we looked at in Ezra chapter 7 and verse 22. It gave Ezra permission to convey to Jerusalem all the Ezra money that Ezra might receive from a fundraising effort. And it also included a royal mandate to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Those were temporary provisions. However, there were also some permanent provisions. Ezra was endowed with chief authority over a great area beyond the river with the power to appoint magistrates and judges and to require that these magistrates and judges had an understanding of the Mosaic law. Ezra was empowered to enforce his decisions by penalties, including fines, imprisonment, banishment, or even death. A permanent status of tax exemption was granted to the entire religious community concerning the services in the temple. This was a great this was God working through his providence and his providence through those who have power on earth. And we will find that God frequently does this in our times if we just open our eyes and look. Ezra chapter 7 and verse 27. Ezra chapter 7 and verse 27. Ms. Wilma. Chapter 27, blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the heart of the king to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. And 28, please, Julie. In 28, and who extended to me his steadfast love before the king and his counselor and before all the king's mighty officers, I took courage for hands of the Lord my God was on me, and I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. Okay, now, if we look at 27, it says to beautify the house of Jehovah. And this, it shows us the use that Ezra made of any surplus money that had been made available above and beyond what was needed to carry out the specific instructions of the king. And we also see in verse 27 that these things were put on the heart of the king. Who have put them there? God put them there. God has an open calling to anyone who will trust and obey. Um, Jehovah extended kindness to me before the king. This could be interpreted as a reference to the favor that God 
gave Ezra when he made requests way back in seven, chapter seven and verse six, before the king for what he had received, but it included the words before the king's counselor and all of his mighty princes. This makes it more likely that Ezra held some kind of an office of some description. Scripture does not tell us what that might be. Under Artaxerxes, which had placed him under the observation of high officers of the king, that God had given Ezra favor in the hearts of everyone. Beside that, Ezra here credited God himself with putting such a thing on the king's heart. There is no reference made to the request that Ezra obviously made. Picking up in verse chapter eight, picking up in chapter eight. And verse one, this is going to be an extended reading. Chapter eight and verse one, Cora. Ezra chapter eight, verse one, it says, these are the family heads and those registered with them who came up with me from the Babylon during the reign of King Ar Ar Artaxerxes. Ar Okay, uh, nine, please. Michael, do you have a good signal now? Chapter, chapter eight, verse two. Nine. This was prayer about the intermarriage. After these things had been done, the leaders came to me and said, the people of Israel, including the priests and the Levites have not kept themselves separate uh, from their neighborhood. I think that's the wrong verse, Mike. Chapter eight, verse two. Verse two. Yes, Of please. the descendant of Pinehas, Jesson, of the descendants of Itamar, Daniel, of the descendants of David, Hattush, of okay. the descendants of Chikania. Okay, verse three, the, Marvin. Verse three, Marvin. Okay, verse three says, of the sons of Shekaniah, who was the sons of Parar, Zechariah, with whom were registered 150 men. Okay, verse four, Fred. Of the sons of Peneth Moab. 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 Uh, uh, Moab. Eli. This is a tough one. Eli. Hina. Yeah, there you Hinea, go. The son of Zerah. Zerahiah. Zerah, yeah, Zerah, go ahead. Zerah, 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 and with him, 200 men. Okay. First five, please, Gladys. Gladys. Yes. Ex Extra eight, chapter five. Of the descendant of Satu. Shenaya, son of Jezel, and with him 300 men. Okay. Verse 6, please, Gladys. Uh, Gladys just read. Verse 6, Elaine. Verse 6, of the sons of Eden, Ebed, of the, Ed, Ebed the son of Jonathan, and with him 50 men. Okay. Verse 7, please, Giselle. Of the son of Ella, Jeshiah, the son of Atalaya, and with him, 70 men. Eight, please, Anna. Verse eight says, of the son of Zephatiah, Zebediah, the son of Michael, and with him, 80 men. Okay. Nine, please, Ronald. Of the sons of Joab, 
Obadiah, the son of Jehel, and with him 218 men. Okay. By the way, that Latin, that second name is Obadiah. Obadiah. Okay. Ten, please. Roxanne. And ten of the son of Bani, Shelumit, the son of Josipiah, and with him 160 men. Yes. Okay. Eleven, Wilma. Verse 11, of the sons of Bebai, Shekariah, the son of Bebai, and with him 28 men. Okay. Or, no, Julie. In verse 12, of the sons of Asgad, Johanan, the son of Hakatan, and with him 110 men. 13, Cora. 13, the descendants of Adonikam, the, the last one, whose names were Eliphel, Jewel, and Shemaiah, and with them, 60 men. 14, Michael, can you get it? Yes, sir. Of the descendants of Big Bai, Uthai, and Sakur, and with them, 70 men. And 15, please, Marvin. 15. I gathered them to the river that runs to Ahava, and there we come three days. As I reviewed the people and the priest, I found there none of the sons of Levi. Okay, so what we see here is we see a litany of people who have come. Uh, this list actually runs parallel to a list that we looked at in chapter three. And there are many similarities. Generally speaking, the same family names appear in both lists, although not always in the same order. The numbers in this list seem to be smaller. They, truthfully, they never reach a third of the totals in the other lists. And I really don't understand the reason for this. We do find new families mentioned, and there are those, including a commentator by the name of uh, Bowman, who have challenged the list. It also has been defended, and it fits that the reality of this list is also supported by a extra biblical book that is first Esratus. We see that in chapter 8, verses 28 through 40 in the book of Esratus. The whole number of the accompanying Ezra on this journey include the Levites and the Nephilim family that were recruited by Ezra. And the total appears to be, if you add them all up, 1,773 males. Uh, Rollison estimates that the number, including women and children, approximately 9,000 or about five per family. Uh, another commentator by the name of Williamson estimates the total number as maybe as low as 5,000. Uh, the most remarkable name in the whole list of the people that are here is Hetush, and he's the son of Shechaniah. Beyond any reasonable doubt, he was the descendant of David. And we can find this in 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 22. 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 22. Uh, Fred, that's you. It was 22, you said? Yes, 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 22. The son of Shechaniah, um, she, Shemaiah. Shema, Shemaiah, and the son of Shemaiah, Hattush. There you go. I, Igal, Bara, Bariah, Neriah, Neriah, and Shephet. Right. Shephet. So. What we see here is a correlation between the offspring of David and how they are still considered to be in the leadership of the people of Israel. 
And we've already read verse 15. So let's pick up in 16, verse 16. And that's going to be Gladys. Oh, by the way, I have to ask this question, just me being cute. Don't you wish your mother had given you one of these names? Oh, <laughs> Marvin. Oh. I don't from an island. <laughs> Fred, you want one of these names? No, maybe if I lived back in that time, it would be more common. Maybe, right? Yeah. Joseph, like another language. I want, it, I want, it almost is, isn't it? Good morning, everyone. Morning, Joseph. I want the name of those two brothers, Jehoshaphat and, and their brothers, isn't it? Yes. Jehos, Jehoshaphat and what's the other guy's name? And we named our son Frank, so that's okay. <laughs> Joseph, we are in Ezra chapter 8. Uh, give me verse 17, please. Is that, uh, Gladys is reading 16. 16, I can't hear her. So I summoned Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaya, Eltanan, Jarib, Eltanan, Nathan, Sekariah, and me, and Meshulam. 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 Who were Milshulam, who were leaders, and J Jairib and Eltan, who were men of learning. Men of learning. That's important, isn't it? We always need men of learning. 17, Joseph. And I sent them to Edo, the leader in Cassiphaea. I told them what to say to Edo and his kinsmen. The temple servants in so that they may bring attendance to us for the house of our God. 18, Elaine. 18. And by the good hand of our God on us, they brought us a man of discretion of the sons of Mali, the son of Levi, Lev, Lev, yes. son of Israel, namely Sherebiah, with his sons of kinsmen. 18. Okay, very good. By the way, you did a good job, a good job with the difficult names. 19, yourself. Also, unmute. Unmute. Ezra chapter eight, eight verse 19. Also, has has Habia, and with him, uh, Yes, Haya of the son of Merari with his kinsent and their sons. Okay. 20, please, Anna. And 20 says, besides 220 of the temple servants, whom David and his officials had set apart to attend the Levites, these were all mentioned by name. Okay. And 21, Ron Lynn. And 21 says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him a safe journey from journey for our life, for ourselves, our children, and uh, all our goods. Okay. Um, we started off with Ezra gathering at the river that runs to Ahava, Ahava and uh, which means that the company had already left Babylon on the first day of the month. And they were delayed there when the journey was resumed 12 days later. Some time had elapsed in their journey at this station and more delay is going to occur as Ezra finds it necessary to recruit Levites. Uh, why were Levites important under the Levitical covenant? 
the reason that Levites were important under the Levitical covenant is they were the only ones who could offer a sacrifice. Without them, they couldn't have worship because animal sacrifice that had to be administered by a son of Aaron or a Levite was considered to be integral or an important part of their worship. Um, the river that runs to Ahaba is a matter of debate. Some say it's a small stream that runs into the Euphrates, and uh, others say that we just don't know where it is. The place is mentioned under a slightly different variant in the name. Uh, it's used Abba and Eva in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24. Roxanne? Second Kings chapter 17, verse 24. Second Kings verse chapter 17. And chapter 17, verse 24. 24 says that, and the kings of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kuta, Ava, Hamat, and Sapharvea by him, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the people of Israel. And they took possession of Samaria and lived in it, its cities. Okay, so what we see here in Second Kings is not only a reference to the same river, but we also see the beginning of the Samaritans. And Samaritans uh, were not looked upon kindly by the people of Jewish people, the people of Israel. The difficulty in recruiting Levites was probably due to the reduction in their status by the encroaching encroachment activities that existed in the post-exile priesthood. And if we look at the book of Malachi, they were actually involved in criminal activity. We're not, we, you know what, let's take a look at that. In fact, God actually curses the Levites in Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 1. Wilma. Malachi chapter 2 verse 1. And now, O priest, this command is for you. Verse 2, please, Julie. And verse 2, if you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed them, because you do not lay it to heart. Okay, so what we see here is that the priesthood had fallen into disrepute based on their behavior. It, and this did cause God to curse them. We saw that in Malachi. Um, however, Ezra was determined to bring Levites on his migration. This was necessary because they're the only ones that could offer sacrifice. Ezra regarded this company of his as an ideal Israel, which, of course, required the presence of Levites. And as we're going to take a look, we have a second exodus coming up in the book of Ezra, and there will be more that join. Uh, the Nephilim were 220, and these were the Gib Gibeonites that we found in Joshua chapter 9 and verse 23. Joshua chapter 9 and verse 23. Michael, you want to get that? Joshua chapter 9, verse 23.
Okay. You are now under curse. You will never be released from service as wood cutters and water carriers for the house of God. Does anybody remember why the Gibeonites were cursed with being servants? Brett? No. Okay. Uh, they had fooled the people of Israel. They had, what they had done was uh, they had portrayed themselves as having come a long way in order to sign a peace treaty with uh, the people of Israel during their conquest of the promised land. And they fooled them and they got a con they got a peace treaty signed with them so that they couldn't be attacked. However, their status had been reduced. But we, we see is when they were the exodus occurred under Ezra, when the return to Jerusalem, they were still there. They were still considered part of the kingdom of Israel, if not full citizens. Okay, guys, and I finish that just on time. We will pick up tomorrow in verse 21, Ezra chapter 8, verse 21 tomorrow. Everybody have can a blessed day. Along? Sure, I can. Can you? Bye, guys. Bye, Elaine, everyone. Class, Bye, glad everyone. to have you today. Bye, everyone.